Today's story is Wagon Wheels. Chapter 1 The Duck Out. There it is, boys, Daddy said. Across this river is Nicodemus, Kansas. That is where we are going to build our house. There is free land for everyone here in the West. All we have to do is go and get it. We had come a long way to get to Kansas, all the way from Kentucky. It had been a hard trip and a sad one. Mama died on the way. Now there were just four of us, Daddy, Willie, little brother, and me. Come on, boys, Daddy called. Let's put our feet on free dirt. We crossed the river, wagon and all. A man was waiting for us on the other side. I'm Sam Hickman, he said. Welcome to the town of Nicodemus. Why, thank you, brother, Daddy said. But where is your town? Right here, Mr. Hickman said. We did not see any houses, but we saw smoke coming out of holes in the prairie. Shocks, my daddy said. Holes in the ground are for rabbits and snakes, not for free black people. I'm a carpenter. I can build fine wood houses for this town. No time to build wood houses now. Mr. Hickman told my daddy, winter is coming and winter in Kansas is mean. Better get yourself a dugout before the ground freezes. Daddy knew Sam Hickman was right. We got our shovels and we dug us a dugout. It wasn't much of a place. Dirt floor, dirt walls, no windows, and the roof was just grass and branches. But we were glad to have that dugout when the wind began to whistle across the prairie. Every night, Willie lit the lamp and made a fire. I cooked a rabbit stew or fried a pan of fish fresh from the river. After supper, Daddy, Daddy would always say, how about a song or two? He would take out his banjo and plinka plink, plinka plink. Pretty soon, that dugout felt like a home. Chapter 2 Indians Winter came, and that Kansas winter was mean. It snowed day after day. We could not hunt or fish. We had no more rabbit stew, no more fish fresh from the river. All we had was cornmeal mush to eat. Then one day there was no more cornmeal. There was not a lick of food in the whole town of Nicodemus, and nothing left to burn for firewood. Little brother cried all the time. He was so cold and hungry. Daddy wrapped blankets around him. Hush, baby son, he said to him. Try to sleep. Supply train will be coming soon. But the supply train did not come, not that day or the next. On the third day, we heard the sound of horses. Daddy looked out to see who it was. Oh, Lord, he said, Indians. We were so scared. We had all heard stories about Indians. I tried to be brave. I will get my gun, Daddy, I said. But Daddy said, hold on, Johnny. Wait and see what they do. We watch it from the dugout. Everyone in the Kodamas was watching the Indians. First, they made a circle that each Indian took something from his saddlebag and dropped it on the ground. The Indians turned and rode straight toward the dugouts. Now they are coming for us, Willie cried. We raised our guns, but the Indians rode right past us and kept on going. We waited a long time to be sure they were gone. Then everyone ran out into the snow to see what the Indians had left. It was food. Everyone talked at once. Look, fresh deer meat, fish, dried beans and squash, and bundles of sticks to keep our fires burning. There was a feast in Nicodemus that night, but before we ate, Daddy said to us, Johnny, Willie, little brother, I want you to remember this day. When someone says bad things about Indians, tell them the Osage Indians saved our lives in Nicodemus. Chapter 3, Moving On When spring came, Daddy said, Boys, this prairie is too flat for me. I want to find land with trees and hills. I'm going to move on, 
I said. I will start loading the wagon. But Daddy said, "Hold on now. I want you boys to stay. You have shelter and friends here. I will go alone. I will send for you when I find a place." I was scared to stay alone. So was Willie. Poor little brother. He tried to understand what Daddy was saying. We all listened as Daddy told us. I will leave you corn meal for your bread and salt for your meat. And some molasses for a sweet. You be good boys. You hear? Take care of little brother. Never let him out of your sight. There were tears in Daddy's eyes when he said goodbye to us. Mrs. Sadler and Mrs. Hickman said that Ed Moldy must be off his head to leave you poor babies all alone. He. I told them I am no baby. I'm eleven, and Willie is eight. We can take care of ourselves. Little brother is only three, but we can take care of him too. We did what our daddy told us. We hunted and fished and cooked and swept the dugout clean. We even baked our own corn bread. And we never did let little brother out of our sight. We made him a wagon out of an old box. Mrs. Sadler gave us wheels for it. We put little brother in the wagon and pulled him along with us. You could hear the wheel wheel squeak a mile away. When people in Nicodemus heard that sound, they always said, "There go the moldy boys." One day we were picking berries near the river. Willie said, "Johnny, I smell smoke." We looked up. The whole sky was orange. We heard someone shout, "Pretty fire!" We saw the fire behind us. It was coming fast. We will be burned up! Willie cried. There is no place to run. I saw a deer running toward the river. Quick! I told Willie, "Run to the river!" We ran, pulling the wagon behind us. People from the Codemus were running with us now. When we got to the water, I told Willie, "Jump in! Hold the wagon! I will hold the little brother." Everyone was jumping in around us. Mister Hickman helped me hold the little brother, and Mister Hill helped Willie with the wagon. There was fire and smoke all around, but the water kept the fire from us. We stayed there for a long time. When the fire had died out, we all walked home. Chapter Four: The Letter. April went by, then May and June. We hunted and fished and waited for a letter from Daddy. Nothing came. Then in July, the post rider came with a letter for us. It said, "Dear boys, I have found fine tree land near Solomon City. There, there is wood he- here to build a house and good black dirt for growing corn and beans. There is a map with this letter. The map shows where I am and where you are." Follow the map. Stay close to the Solomon River until you come to the Deer Trail. You will find me. I know you can do it because you are my fine big boys. Love to you all, Daddy. We started out the next day. We piled corn bread and blankets into little brother's wagon until there was no room for little brother. Can you walk like a big boy? I asked him. He nodded. All of Nicodemus came out to say goodbye. The Hills, the Hickmans, the settlers. They said, "Poor babies, going a hundred fifty miles all by themselves." But we knew we could do it. Our daddy had told us so. We went, we went to the river and we followed the map. We walked all day. When little brother got tired, I carried him. At night, we stopped and made a fire. I told Willie we will take turns. First, I will watch the fire, and you sleep. Fire the gun sometimes; it will scare wild animals away. There were plenty of wild animals on the prairie. Wolves, panthers, coyotes. Each night, our fire and the sound of the gun kept them away. But one night, I heard Willie call to me, "Johnny, wake up! But don't move." I opened my eyes. There, on the ground next to me, was a big prairie rattlesnake. It was warming itself by the fire. 
I didn't move. I didn't breathe for fear it would bite me. What shall we do? Willie whispered. I tried to think what Daddy would do. Then I remembered Daddy once told me the snakes like warm places. I said to Willie, "Let the fire go out." It seemed like hours we were there, Willie, little brother, and me staying so still. At last, the fire went out. The night air got chilly. The snake moved away into the darkness. For twenty-two days we followed the river. Then one day we came to a deer trail. It led away from the river, just like on the map. This way, I told my brother. We walked along the trail. It led up a hill. On the side of the hill, we saw a little house with a garden in front. We could see corn growing. A man came out of the house. When he saw us, he began to run toward us. Daddy, Willie, Johnny, little brother. Then there was such hugging and kissing and talking and crying and laughing and singing that I bet they heard us all the way back in Nicodemus. And old Mrs. Settler must have said, "Sounds like the Moldy Boys have found their daddy." Bye bye. Good night.